In this video, we're gonna do a Charlie Parker Donna Lee piano tutorial. And this was prompted by some of the things that I've been seeing in the Jazz Pianos group. People messing around with Donna Lee and looking through other YouTube videos. I didn't really find anyone that dove into it quite as deep as it should be because there are a lot of bebop licks in the tune Donna Lee. It was written by Charlie Parker. It's essentially a Charlie Parker solo. And I think it's really important to decipher the lines that are in this tune. I'm gonna play it for you in just a little bit in its entirety. I'll play the head in a couple of courses of solo. But as we look at this tune, try to remember that bebop is a language. It's not just messing around with random notes. There's a specific language that fits the chords and fits the scales and fits the genre of the music. And I'm gonna walk you through a lot of the ideas and the language behind bebop. And again, this is a great tune to do that. So let's just start in with the very first line. And of course, I'm just playing it slow, but it would be up to speed. Okay, and it's gonna go about 240 beats per minute. So it zips along pretty good. And if it does that, it's probably a good idea to learn some of the bebop lines that are in this tune so that you can solo yourself using those ideas. So right off the bat, he's got this triplet, which is very common in bebop, where you're taking the seventh of the chord and just playing a tuplet. And then what he does is he comes down the scale, which is a bebop scale. And bebop being the major bebop scale, and this is the sharp five, or flat six, as it were. So if you play the bebop scale, it's essentially the E natural being the flat six, it's the passing note. So that's what he's doing. He's just starting off with that triplet and then coming down the scale. And then when he hits the F7 chord, he's still continuing down the F7 scale, except he's got, in that case, an another flat six, which is the D flat. So in the F7 bebop scale, he's got a B flat thrown in there, which is part of the F7 bebop scale. So it would be this. Okay, so that's important. And then he's got this, which is essentially just an F7 chord starting on the third of the chord. So if you went up in thirds, he's not coming down, he's just reinitializing the second note below instead of above. So if it's above, it's this. Instead, when it's below, it's like this. And that's very typical bebop, to kind of take the second note and put it below the first note and then go back up, like this. And again, you want to mix that with other things as well. And then what he does right away again, right here, is go back to the same thing that he did at the beginning, which is that triplet. In this case, he's just playing the flat six again. So this is the B flat seven bebop scale. It's got a flat six right here. And then he's just playing the chord, which is a B flat nine chord. So this is the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. Right, so this, a couple of passing notes. And then he's finishing with bebop. That's where the name comes from when it's one and bebop, right? Okay, that's very typical. You might want to do that with all sort of different chords, trying to figure out that, that B flat nine. You could do it with E flat nine. Do it with A flat nine. Okay, and just keep going around. keep going around the cycle of fifth because that 
right there, that's you know really standard bebop, right? Three, five, seven, and nine, and then bebop. And then a couple of passing chords. Now this is what we call the over and under passing notes. These ones right here. This one's over, this one's under, and this is the destination. So the destination being the, let's see, that's the 11th, right? Of the B flat minor seven. And then he just plays a chord. So this is the passing note. So often when you hear beboppers play, they're starting the chord or that arpeggio with a half step below. Okay, very important. And then he's got three, five, seven, nine, eleven of B flat seven. So this. Right, that whole chord is in there. And then he's doing the same thing in the E flat seven that he did back here, where we did this one, and that's the one I'm pointing to. So now he's going to the seventh of E flat, and then a passing note. So what is that passing note? That is the flat six. So often you're gonna see that bebop flat six from the scale. Fingering on that one's gonna be a little difficult. Yeah, so thumb here, so I would say first finger and then three, two. And again, there it is. Instead of bebop here on this note, he just plays a single note. So it's three, five, seven, and nine of A flat major. And then does it again on E flat minor seven. So starting on the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth of E flat minor. And then he's got a couple of bebops here on a D seven, which is really just an A flat seven as well. D7 is just the tritone substitution. Love it. Instead of doing this, he's doing. So really the same thing as this one here, except he's not coming down to the same notes, he's just going to the next chord. Okay, let's play the line from the beginning. missed a couple of notes in there, but uh, when I play it, hopefully I'll catch all of those. But I think the whole idea again is just to take all of these little phrases together and put them together to make longer phrases. I've done videos like this before using Sonny Stitt's bebop language called Stitt's Bits, and I'll actually post a link up here in this corner if you take a look up there. I'll post a link to Stitz Bits and it does the same thing. It's, it's taking these short bits of language from the bebop tradition and putting them into longer phrases. So you can see where I circle things and I'm spelling out the chords and things like that. That's the short language, but putting them all together makes the longer language. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna do a couple of tutorials on this Donna Lee tune because I think it's important to get all of the phrases out of here because it's really going to help your playing a lot even if you just learn this tune by itself. All right, that'll do it for the tutorial part. So let me play the head and a couple of choruses of solo for you and then maybe you'll get the idea behind the tune itself. When I come back I'm going to post a link to the sheet music and this wonderful backing track that I put together. I think it's wonderful actually. I loved playing with this and practicing with it and hopefully the recording will be good. So let me play it and we'll come back and I'll post a link to those things.
there's my version of Donna Lee with a couple of courses of solo. I hope that made a lot of sense. And I hope you got a lot out of this video as well. If you have any questions about it, you can post some comments below. Now, I'll post a link up here in the corner, like I mentioned, to the sheet music and the backing track. I actually got the drums and put the baseline together using a VST plugin. And it's, I think it's really good to practice with. And you're probably not going to find another one like it on the internet. So go check that out and download it. If you have any questions or comments, like I said, post them below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. We could use a few more subscribers just like you. We've been around for a year now and we're growing quite, quite a bit right now. So uh, we'd love to have you on board. So hit the little bell when you subscribe and we'll notify you of all of the upcoming videos that we're making. And when you're over at jazzmental.com, check some of the things that we've got going on there as well. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you in the next Donnelly Charlie Parker tutorial.